Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson Number 31. And in tonight's lesson, we are going to be doing the following. We are going to be adding mixed numbers. And we're going to do that in a whole bunch of different ways. And so actually tonight, I'm thinking of doing four problems with you together so that we can sort of uh, get through all the different ways that, that, uh, that this lesson tries to teach us to uh, add mixed numbers. So let's take a look at our first problem. We'll do, we'll do some of the examples that they've partially done for you in the book. Um, and that'll hopefully give you an idea of how to do them. It'll also mean that we, um, we don't have to start from scratch with each one of them. We can sort of start with some of the thinking done for us and then model the rest of it using one of their strategies. So let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one, the directions could not be simpler. Solve. Uh, but look, they solve in a very particular way here, and it looks like they use number bonds. It looks like they're breaking down our mixed numbers into the whole parts and the fractional parts. So let's see what they're doing here. Let's see. They take 2 and 1 third, and they break it down into the two wholes and then the 1 third. And then they do the same thing with 1 and 2 thirds. They break that down into the whole, the 1, and the fractional part, 2 thirds. And then they go ahead and do the addition. So what they're doing here is that they're... They're saying, look, these are mixed numbers, sure, but let's just go ahead and add the whole parts first. So that's 2 plus 1. That'll give us 3. And then let's go ahead and add the fractional parts, which I think we can add because, again, look at our units. We're in thirds and thirds. So those are like units, so we can add them. So we add the 1 third and the 2 thirds together, and we get 3 thirds. So once we've gotten to that point, we're in pretty good shape because we've got 3, the whole number, plus 3 thirds. The best part of this is that we already we already know that three thirds of something is the same as one, so we can go ahead and just express three thirds as one. And now we've got whole numbers to add together. So out of this whole mess of mixed numbers, we actually just end up with a regular plain old whole number of four. We did a little pause point here at three and three thirds. That's not the wrong answer, but it's certainly not as simply as we can express it. We can convert those three thirds into a single whole and then add it to our other three holes and get our answer four. So I'm going to let you go ahead and work on the other couple of problems in number one. Let's take a look at one more. Problem number two, directions again, very similar, solve. Use a number line to show your work. And again here, we've got uh, two mixed numbers, two and two-fourths plus one and three-fourths. And the way that they've done this is very similar. They've decided, okay, well, let's just add up the whole numbers first. That's the two and the one would give us 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then let's go ahead and add up the fractional parts. 2 fourths plus 3 fourths is 5 fourths. They do one extra thing, though. They break down that 5 fourths into another whole and a part. Let's see if we can solve this problem together uh, using our number line. And there are a lot of different ways that we could solve this. The way that I think like to think of the number line is let's make our big jumps, our whole number jumps first, and then let's make our fractional jumps later. So the first thing we do on our number line is we hop all the way out to our first whole number, that's 2. So we would hop out to here, 2, that's 2. And that's, not, of course, not to scale, because, let's see, i got, I got to believe, let's see, the 1 would be here and the 0 would be here. But that extends our number line back into this mess. So I'm going to say we hopped up to 2. And let's see, I want to add a, the other whole number, and that's one more nut whole number. So I go from 2 out to 3, so that's adding one more. All right, and now let's let's we've done our whole numbers. Let's start adding up our fractional parts. We hop, need to hop out two more fourths, and these each look like fourths, right? One, two, three, four. Yep, those look like fourths. So hopping out two more fourths means hopping out that far. That's two fourths out further, right? And let's see, we've got our last fractional part, three more fourths. So let's see, we're going to have to hop out from here. We're going to have to hop one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So let's go ahead and do that out here, that's adding up 3 fourths. So we have done, we've added 2, 1, 2 fourths, and 3 fourths, just like we had here. 2, 1, 2 fourths, and 3 fourths. And where do we end up? Well, we look out at our number line, we end up well past 2, past 3, all the way out to 4, but we're a little past 4. How much past 4? Oh, that looks like 1 fourth. So I think that this spot on the line here, I'll do it in red, I think that spot is 4 and 1 fourth. And if we go back to our number bond that they did here, they were getting at the same thing. They were saying, look, we ended up with 3 and 5 fourths. We can see that in our number line, we ended up here with 3 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fourths, right? 
And they said, well, five-fourths, we can break that down into a whole, four-fourths, and a part, one-fourth, and then we could add three plus the whole, we would end up with four, and we'd have this fractional part left, the one-fourth, right here, and we'd end up with the same number, right? Four and one-fourth, or four and one-fourth. There are other ways that you can do this on the number line. You could have gone out two and two-fourths, and then added one and three-fourths. There are a number of different ways that we can do that. But they will because uh, you can use your addition in any, uh, in any order, we can go ahead and reorder that in a way that makes this problem simpler for us. So that in this case, we'll do that this way with two, one, two-fourths, three-fourths. We end up at the same spot, four and one-fourth, that we would have had we just done the version here without the number line. All right, let's take a look at one more. Problem three, again, has very simple directions. Solve. But this time, we're going to use the arrow way to show how to make one. Now, this is unusual. So let's take a look at the problem here. It's two and three-fourths plus one and three-fourths. And what have they done first? Well, let's see. It looks to me like they've taken all the whole units, the two and the one, and they've added them together to give us three. So basically, they've taken that one whole unit and they've pushed it over to this number. They've said, well, it's instead of two and three-fourths plus one plus three-fourths, Let's just take the whole units over here. We'll call that 3 and 3 fourths. And then we still have that fractional part, 3 fourths left. So now we have this expression, 3 and 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. And it looks to me like they said to ourselves, hey, we've got enough fourths to make a whole here. So let's break down that 3 fourths into a couple of numbers. 1 fourth would be really helpful because I can see that 1 fourth plus 3 fourths would make us a whole. So I'm going to break this 3 fourths into 3 fourths and 2 fourths, and then I'm going to add them together. I'm going to add 3 fourths plus 1 fourth to make a whole, and then I'm going to have this left over. And that's what they've done over here with the arrow method. They said, look, we got to this point, 3, three and 3 fourths. And if we said, hey, let's add 1 fourth using the arrow method like this, we would get up, they add one fourth here, they would make a hole, and we would get up to four holes. And that would leave a little bit more that we'd still need to add. We'd need to add two fourths more using the arrow method, right? And that would be four and two fourths. So, in other words, they've taken this fractional part, three fourths, that we needed to add, and they've split it up into one fourth and two fourths. And as long as they show both of those parts in the arrow method, the one fourth and the two fourth being added, then that it'll be helpful because it'll get us from three and three fourths, a mixed number, to just plain old four. And then when we add that fractional part, there's not a lot of difficulty in just doing this with mental math, right? Four plus two fourths is just the mixed number four and two fourths. And that's what we end up with here, four and two fourths. So I think what students get a little bit confused about here is they think, okay, so I always break off one. Well, no. You break off the amount that will help you out, right? In this case, we needed one more fourth to make a whole. So that's what we broke off using our number bond, right? But there may be other problems where we might, to, might need to break off two of a unit, or three of a unit, or four of a unit, or more. We break off the amount of this that will be helpful in creating an extra hole there. And that's kind of what the arrow method shows here, is that we want to use the arrow method to get to the next whole number. Then we can use the rest of the fractional part to build our mixed number. And that's a little easier way of doing it in our head. We can use the arrow method for now. We can also use number lines as we did in problem number two. Any one of those things will work for us. But that's how we're working on these problems here in number three. Let's take a look at one more problem. Problem four asks us simply to solve. Use whichever method you prefer. And so we're going to look at this problem here. One and four fifths plus one and three fifths. And I'm more of a number bond guy, so I'm going to break it down that way. I'm going to break up our, our wholes and our fractions. So that's one and four fifths on this one. And sorry for the issue here. We got one and three fifths over here. Excellent. Now, now that I've done that, now that I've broken it into part wholes and fractions, I want to go ahead and add up our wholes. So that's one plus one. That's just simply two, right? And then we've got uh, we get four fifths over here plus three fifths, so that's two and seven fifths. And that is a correct answer, but I'm noticing something. My numerator here is bigger than my denominator, and I think that means that we can use a number bond to break that down into a hole in the parts. Let's see, how many fifths of this would it take to make a hole? 
Well, let's see, that would be 5 fifths. So I'm going to break that off. 5 fifths go here. And if we have 5 fifths here from 7 fifths, what must be over here? Let's see, 5, 6, 7. That must be 2 more fifths must be over here. So now I have, instead of 2 and 7 fifths, I have 2 plus 1 plus 2 fifths, or 3 and 2 fifths, because I've converted five of those fifths into an extra whole. So instead of two and seven fifths, I have three and two fifths. So I did a couple of number bonds here just to separate those things out and an extra number bond here to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. And we end up with our answer three and two fifths. Excellent. Well, thank you for your patience tonight. Four problems is among the most that I've ever done here on Mr. Kung Has Problems. So I hope you'll come back and join me again on tomorrow night's episode. Take care.